Welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I wanted to show you a proper way to bench in a next gen excavator running earthworks. Uh, next gen meaning that it's got factory cat sensors on it. It's not sensors that we as Site Tech added to it. So therefore, any bucket measure ups or bucket changes or adjustments to elevation through the cutting edge are actually going to happen through the cat screen. And I'm going to show you this process. So on the main screen right here of the trim or the earthwork screen, you can see that I've got elevation set at the bottom right here. In here, you don't want to do elevation for design elevation. You want to have it on just true elevation. Um, if you do design elevation, you're going to go wrong. You also want to make sure that the carrot here on the left side, meaning the red dot, is on the side that you're actually going to set down on the elevation. It changes based on that. So there's a couple different ways to bench in. Um, I personally don't like to use a survey control point like this one right here. This survey control point actually could get pushed into the ground. It could get bumped. And your surveyors are actually using these for different survey things coming. Um, they may set it up to, to uh, put back sites on it to use for uh, setting up total stations. So if you do only have one of these, you want to be very cautious and only set up to the side of it just don't let your hydraulics settle down on it. So if you can get to the side of it, you can check the elevation that way. Um, you can bench over with a uh, level or you can bench over with a laser. But this is not my favorite way to actually bench in because we don't want to mess those control points up. My favorite way to do it is to use an elevation on, the, on a hard surface, which I'm going to show you next. The way that I prefer to do it is have an elevation painted on the ground. You can see right here, you've got the circle with the dot and the 419408. This is the best way and I, I think to do it because it's repeatable. Every day you can hit it, every other day, whenever you need to. It's a hard surface, so you're not gonna push anything into the ground. So, with the left tip of my bucket, we'll set down on that point right there. And you can then start referencing your elevation. This machine is still benched in very well because we had just set it up not too long ago. Here's the challenge though. See where it's 419408? Well, on the elevation screen, it's only gonna go 94.00 up to 05 to 0.10. It's gonna just bounce every 500. So it's a little bit of a game where you would, if let's say you were at 00 and you wanted to get up closer to the 10, you would change the number to where it's just bouncing in between 05 and 10. I feel like this is close enough for this machine with a tilt rotator, but the way that you would actually change to get the elevation from our Trimble screen to change in a next gen is coming down here on the cat screen. What you gotta do on the cat screen is go into where you would change your bucket. So in here, you've got your bucket working tool. So in here, you can see that currently we've got the 60 inch tilt rotator, which means that it's highlighted, but it's also got the circle in the middle right there. What you don't wanna do when you go in here is do a bucket measure up. This is where some go wrong. You'll get this warning every time, just telling you, hey, if you're in here, you can change things. Um, what you don't wanna do is this bucket measure up right here. What you only want to change is just the blade wear to actually tell the machine it's either a little longer or a little shorter. The way you do that is this one that's called dimension. So if you just hit the arrow for dimension and go in here, go past the warning, in here is going to show you all the different things that were measured up, the G to, G to H, G to G, and J, and G to Q. You don't need to worry about changing any of those. The one that you want is J to J1. And I'll show you if you don't remember how or what these are, how to go in and actually see what they are. For example, J to Z, that's not the one I want, but if I came in here, I could hit this little question mark and it'll actually show me what it's asking for. That's not the one that I want. The one that I want is J to J1, but you don't want original. Original is the number that was put in when it was measured up. This J to J1 current would be if you needed to actually make an adjustment. So you would go in here to make sure it's the right one. You hit the question mark and it's showing you. But you don't need to go out and actually measure that with a tape measure. If you know what your elevation needs to change, all you need to do is hit this number right here and change it to where it matches the elevation out there. As soon as you're done, just hit OK. And then come out, hit home, and you're done. 
You will get a quick little warning that comes up on our screen that says, hey, you, there's been an adjustment made, and then the elevation will come back in, and you can just make sure that it matches. So these are the best things to do. The worst thing you can do is go grade for an entire day or a week and actually be cutting the elevations wrong. So thank you for watching this uh, Earthworks training video from Side Tickener Mountain on benching in to an elevation and a next-gen excavator running earthworks.